So what's up? This is another episode of Boom TV. I'm here with the homie BZ. Tell them where you from, bro. West California. Yeah, bro from West California. We up in Ironwood right now. Wishing we were somewhere else. Man, nigga, wish he was at the beach or something with the family. Feet kicked up. For real, for real, for real. We'll be back at we'll be back at it. You know, minor set back for a major comeback. Oh, hey, you know. You know, we got that from Lil Boosie right here, you know what I'm saying? You know, gotta fuck with bro. you know, glad he made it back to the house or whatnot, you know what I'm saying? They had him up against it. We gonna get there, man. You know, right now we just sitting here fucking with care pictures, love, you feel me? That's the forget it, that's my name, you know. Oh uh, yeah, bro, already know. I definitely appreciate that. Whenever you want some pictures of your little ones, you know what I'm saying? Yes, just sir. get at me and I got you for sure. Yes, but for those who don't know out there, you know, Care Pictures Love is a simple and easy way to send pictures to people that are incarcerated. So if Brett wants some pictures of his young life, his old lady could just send the pictures to my people's CPL. And then we're going to develop them and get them in the mail so he can get his pictures right away. You know what I'm saying? He'll never miss another birthday, holiday, graduation, none of that. Yeah, man, that's real. We've been out here, man, missing a lot. You know, back to school and started back, so you know them moments that you know we are not there for at the time. So that'd be a blessing to catch up on. You know. Yeah, yeah, we definitely want to see that because we be calling and you know we be we, we be on the phone hearing what's going on, but we can easily see what's going on too. You know, you posting all that same stuff on you know social media. Why you can't you know send some of that to us? Yeah, that's true. You know, got the big, but they, but they got the new back to school Jordans right now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Damn, yeah, yeah. man. You know, same way how we used to be doing it. Yeah, man. How much more time you got left? Yeah, like a year. A year? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Year I got a year too. Boy, we finna be out there. Ain't yeah, that right? Well, <laughs> Ooh, I can't I'm wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely can't wait, man. It's hot than a motherfucker up in here, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, man, I'm gonna get up under this AC, man. But man, I appreciate you for everything, man. That's your little nigga right here. Yep, yep, yep. Enjoy that CD, boy. I holla at you. Right thing. Yeah, but you know, you know, breast slid through for a minute. You know, grab a little boosie and shit. He finna go slap that. You know what I'm saying? Or in prison. You know, you let somebody borrow something. They got 72 hours to bring it back, or you gotta go get that. You know what I'm saying? I'd have been around some crazy ass shit in the pen. Like this one time, dude asked another dude if he could borrow his CDs. So dude been on some cool stuff, gave him his whole CD case. And remember CDs, like everything else in prison, is, is currency. You know what I'm saying? You know, ten dollars a CD, the printer, you know who it is, what, what you know how good it is, and so forth like that. And um uh, so anyway, dude get his CD case and then he just starts selling dude CDs for ten dollars a piece. And you know, so dude keep asking for his CDs like bro, let me get my stuff, let me get my stuff, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Shoot that. And dude just kept putting him off like, oh yeah, I got you, I got you, I got you, whatever, right? And uh and then next you know, dudes was walking around with this dude CDs, listening to him and stuff like that, and he like, damn man, like where you get that from? And everybody's like, oh, we got these from him. So next thing you know, both of these dudes end up being in medical together. And when they pushed up the medical together, you know, they got his lights punched out. It just be little stuff like that that niggas be doing and just be grimy than a motherfucker. You know, and, and, you know you do, you do weird, crazy shit like that, you know, you face consequences. You know, these. Yeah. yeah. I ain't with all that though, you know what I'm saying? I'm more about using this right here. Trying to get some money with shit. That's why I spent forty dollars on this right here. You know what I'm saying? This is one of the best dictionaries I've ever seen in my life. Damn. Yeah. It's my second one I didn't have. Gave the first one to my sister Misha. I wonder if she still got it. She was in college and stuff, you know, so she was able to utilize it better than I was at the time. But I never forgot about it. So when I got the opportunity, I got another one. And I've been using it ever since. You know, use it every day. Vocabulary building. I got the source in there, you know, use all the words in the senses. Make sure you understand what, you know, what's going on around you, what's being said. For real. But yeah, so this is another night up in it. Another night up in it, man. In a minute, they finna turn the lights off. Everybody gonna be running around and shit, speaking, tweaking. Up all night with their boots on. You no. Know, glad it ain't nobody around here snoring hella loud and shit. Because I don't like all that snoring and shit. For real. Got my care pictures love cut. You know what I'm saying? 
on everything. You know, I take these logos and labels on this cup right here, and I pass them out. You know what I'm saying? People set them down on the table, walk away. You know, everybody always touching stuff that don't belong to them and shit. So when they touch my cup and they read the label, then, you know, that's advertising right there for the business. That's what it's all about. And I hit them with, from, from, from different ways, come with different angles. If somebody come to me right now talking about they want to send some pictures, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give them this right here. You know what I'm saying? That's right there. I say, I say, send pictures to incarcerated family and friends by visiting www.carepicturesLove.com or text the phone number. Let me hit us up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, you know, and I got the business card right here to back that up. Yeah, all right, thing. Care pictures love, you see it, CPM. Yeah, so, you know, just making sure that I'm always ready in case somebody come through needing that info. So, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. You know what I'm saying? We got all my little CPO stuff right here in reach. You know what I'm saying? Hashtag CPO. Make sure y'all check that out. Yeah, matter of fact, shit gets so real. You know, somebody asked me to use my CD player. I set my CD player on the table. I got the Care Pictures Love right there on the CD player. I don't be playing no games. Got an ink pen too somewhere with the CPU. Here it is right here. No anything. I say the same thing. Care for just love. Matter of fact, I used to be taping these up. You know, I would tape coming off and stuff. But I would tape these up. I would go to commissary and I would buy 100 ink pens, big pens, regular ink pens. And I would get these little labels and I had to take a razor and I had to break it to get the razor out of it and then I would cut my labels to the perfect size. Eventually I started using the slicer up in the library. It was easy. I just, psh, 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 you know what I'm saying? And get them sliced to the right size or whatnot. And um, I had to go through this little hobby craft program to give me some markers. And then I would, I would do different color schemes on all of the logos. I would sit there on the bottom rack up in the cell and I would do this shit for hours listening to music, you know. And shout out to Russ, I do it myself. You know, I like that song. I, I listened to that song a whole lot while I was doing my thing. So yeah, I would um, put the different color schemes on there. I would cut the tape to the right size and then I would roll them, roll them, roll them over and over and over. 100 black ones, 100 blue ones. And then I had all of them just right there on the bed. And you know what, I used to go and give these pins away around the facility, you know, because, you know, these dudes are, are, are the perfect people to have this information on how to utilize the service. But then I realized that if I give it to these guys, then they have to get on the phone and tell family and friends uh, to utilize the service. So I wanted to cut that out because they don't have the money, they don't have the cards, they don't have the uh, social media or, or, or can text to send this to, you know, uh, this information so they can send these pictures to get this to come in. So therefore, I cut them out by going directly to the streets. And I would make four or five hundred of these pins by hand and I would mail them out. Hold on, let me look around. Right, I'm back. Yeah, I would mail them out, you know what I'm saying, uh, to the streets. And, you know, so that way, you know, send 50 here, 60 here, 80 here, 100 here, you know, I, I sent them out to the streets. So therefore, you know, um, people out there on the streets can get them. And they, they got the, the tools to utilize this service, you know, to, to send some pictures to their people that's incarcerated. You know, I try to hit them from all angles, all angles, because that's the best way. You know, I want a person to walk down the street and see a poster and see Care Pictures Love. Like, man, that's what my folks were just telling me about over the phone. And I want a person to be, you know, driving down the street and see a Care Pictures Love bumper sticker, you know what I'm saying? Or a Care Pictures Love vehicle just wrapped in all CPL advertising. You know, that's all me right there. You know, this is this all the stuff that's going to happen, you know, speaking it into existence right now in front of you. You know, what today is, is August 7, 2018. 
speaking into existence. Later on, I'm gonna replay this video right here, and y'all gonna see that I'm going to do everything that I'm saying I'm gonna do right now. That I did everything that I'm saying I'm gonna do right now. You gonna see it. August 17th. It's the truth. I shit like waking long dog. I'm real clean right now. I'm real crispy right now. I can't wait to get back. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Hey, this is how the hus used to be. <laughs> That's how the hus do it. You feel me? All right, thanks. Shout out to the hus. I'm glad you're on. Wait. It's fucked up. What happened to the jack once you got out, though? Suspect. 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 I mean, that's how the game go, though. So, you know, shit, it is what it is. What's that? Somebody sent me a friend request. Oh, everything. Somebody else, I need to send an invite to care for love about. You know, I'd be on social media, i just be sending friend requests to hella people and shit because, you know, shit, the first thing you see when you come to my page is care for love. You know? And all I need people to do is see it. Oh, everything. Because if you see it, you can tell somebody about it. You might decide to even utilize the service. And then, therefore, I make some money. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, I definitely appreciate all the support that I get. You know, people that share my posts, people that share my videos, like my stuff, love my stuff. You know, I really feel that. I really like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, y'all able to do what y'all do because I do what I do. You know what I'm saying? And I can sit up in here and I can cry all the time. Oh, prison this, prison this, prison that. Man, I ain't with all that. So I'm going to take what I got. I'm going to do what I need to do with it to make it better. Like for instance, you know, I can't get up and just walk out the door. I gotta stay up in here. But while I'm in here, I can choose and decide what I'm gonna do with while I'm in here. Yeah, it's crazy because people on the street, they got all the opportunity in the world to do anything in the world. They motherfuckers don't be doing nothing. Man, that shit tripping me out, I swear. I be sitting back and I be watching people cake up. I'm talking about really going up. And I be like, what is this person doing? And it's right there available. All the information is available to everything that everybody is doing. All you gotta do is just look for it. All you gotta do is ask your phone. Google, how do you do this? How do you do that? Google, tell me this, tell me that. They got Siri and Alexa and all this other old shit now. Oh man, if you want to invest in stocks, you can invest in stocks in these little companies. All you gotta do is just get an app on stocks. It's gonna tell you everything you need to know. Watch this tutorial. You know what I'm saying? They got how-to videos on YouTube for everything. How could you ever not know how to do anything when you got somebody walking you through step by step on how to do it? This is outrageous, man. When I was coming up, we didn't even have phones. Now everybody got a motherfucking phone. But the problem with giving a smartphone to a dumb nigga is he ain't gonna be able to do nothing with it. Man. Ain't gonna be able to do nothing with it. That's like all these people who know how to read but don't read no books. You know, they walk around reading urbans and shit like that. Nigga gonna ask me, you got an urban. I ain't got no motherfucking urbans, nigga. I don't read no urbans. I read books and teach you how to do stuff. I read books on what it is that I wanna do. Matter of fact, let me show you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I got this book right here, Arizona Homeowners Association, you know, and all that jazz. And this right here, I'm not into the Homeowners Association, you know, and they really just talk about a bunch of codes and, 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 and motherfucking uh, sanctions and, you know, all of that stuff, and, and rights and secure lenders. It's not giving me no information that I really need, though. But if, but if I were to ever join a homeowners association or feel like that I was going to do anything with a homeowners association. Everything that I need to know in order to do that is right here in this book. So one of the things that I do want to do is breed dogs. So therefore I have dog breeding. It tells you everything. It tells you about the little dogs. The really little dogs where their, their little bodies are too small for a head to come from out of it. So therefore, they have to have surgery in order to reproduce. And that's why these little dogs are so expensive. And people don't know that. And I didn't know that neither until I read this book. It tells you everything about what it means for a female dog to be in here. Everything. I learned it all from reading this book. I haven't read it all yet, but the, the parts that I have read is really good information. 
And I know the more that I read, the more good information that I'll receive. You see that? Dalmatians. I wonder if my son ever seen that show, 101 Dalmatians. You know, that went off the air a long time ago. So I got this book right here. It's a book of poetry. This is my first book of poetry that I read. I got it in order to support the author right here, a family friend from a long time ago. Yeah, the tempering of my soul, it was really good. It was really good. I recommend if you like poetry to go check that out. Uh, so how to be a real estate investor. You know, I, I like real estate. This right here, this book got some really good information in it. Uh, it talks about tax lien certificates. And for those of you who don't know, a tax lien certificate is when someone owes taxes and they can't pay. The government will sell those taxes in what is called a tax lien certificate. So therefore, you will pay for whatever amount of taxes that this person owes on his house. Now, this house could be worth 200000 300000 whatever. But if this person owes $2,500 in taxes and you pay that $2,500, therefore, the homeowner has one year to pay you back that $2,500 plus interest and interest rates vary depending on your state and if that person is unable to pay you that $2,500 plus interest within that one year time period then you can therefore become the owner of that property and that's wonderful because you can get a $200,000 house for next to nothing so you're either going to get your money back plus interest or you're going to get a house and you can turn around and rent this house out or you can turn around and sell this house and yeah it's going to be all type of taxes for selling it but so what you're going to get way more money back than your 2500 that you originally put into it for people who want to be homeowners and get properties and stuff like that i advise you to look in the tax lien certificates it's great so one of the other things that this thing talked about i gotta look around and make sure ain't nobody coming to you Can't get too comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Get caught up and get blammed upside the head around here. That's out. But yeah, so and you know, one of the other things that they talked about in this book is um, creative financing. And one of the things you can do for creative financing is find a property. So you find a property, let's say for instance, for sale for hundred thousand dollars, and you get that property under contract, which means that you have forty-five days to um, get financing for this property. And once you get the financing for that property, then you know you can buy that property. But now, in this situation, what you do is you go and find somebody else and sell them that same property for one hundred and ten thousand, one hundred and fifteen thousand, so forth and so forth, like that. And then that person will um, get the financing to finance the property for 115000 I will get my 15000 right off the back, and then that person will buy the house for 100000 from the original seller that's over here. It's, 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 a, it's an amazing system, and you should look into it. It's called um, getting a property under contract. In 45 days, hey, 45 days, you can post an ad, you can put it to something on Craigslist, you can put put the property out on uh, on social media. If, if you're a real estate agent, you can put it on an MLS, which is a list that only real estate agents have access to, where they put prized properties on there that all other investors try to get to before anybody else. It's, it's, it's all great stuff, man. You know, this, is, this book right here will teach you how to make money in real estate. It really will. It really will. And uh, so I have some other books on real estate to just teach you the you know basics and stuff like that. But this book right here on real estate is actually a book on commercial real estate investing. And I really, really like this book because it's not just talking about um, you know residential. You know, this one is talking more so about residential property, and it's really like bias and against commercial property. But this book, this is specifically on commercial properties, is it tells you everything you need to know. Like, for instance, if you wanted to get a, a hotel complex. Now, a hotel complex is something that is going to make money. It's the, the only purpose of it is to make money for the investor. So banks, they treat commercial properties, especially hotel properties or apartment complexes, different than they do residential. See, residential, they want to know about how much money you make in and stuff like that. With commercial properties, they want to know how much money is the property set to make. So, let's say for instance, they have some property, uh, apartment complex, there's 10 units, 
and out of the 10 units, they're kind of there's room for improvement. So the rent at the moment is only 750 a month. So 750 a month times 10 will give you 7,500. And you take that 7,500 and times 12, and then they find out what you will get for the annual amount, and that's how much money this property will bring in yearly. But this isn't including other expenses and so forth like that. But you subtract those expenses, and then you get the profit margin right there. But because these apartments are not in such a good condition, once the new owner comes in and improves these apartments and fixes them up, he can therefore raise the rent from $750 to $1,000. And then he went from making $7,500 for these apartments to making $10,000 for these apartments. And then in that $10,000 times 12, now he's making $120,000 a year from these 10 apartments right here. So a bank will look at that and say, okay, if I give this person this set amount of money, how long is it going to take for this person to be able to pay me back? So making, um, so going from making $75,000 to $120,000, you'll be able to give the bank their money back a lot sooner for that investment to be extremely profitable for you throughout. So that's, that's, that's a little example on how commercial real estate works. It's, it's really an amazing thing. Now, you know, I'm past that though, you know, um, I'm moving on to, you know, grants. Oh man, government grants, that's where the real money is at. And with that, it's just that uh, the government takes care of its people, whether you like to believe it or not. It's a lot of things happening and the government is funding the things that are happening. So because the government is funding the things that are happening, they're taking care of you. You're not going to see government actually come and clean this and clean that. No. All they do is provide the money for the nonprofit organizations to provide the service. And not all nonprofit organizations have a mission. And if your mission is what this government grant is for, then you're eligible to get that money. You just have to fill out an application at grants.gov and once you get that money then you have to use that money to further and accomplish that mission that your nonprofit was established under and that's how you were able to get your 501c3 status tax exemption. I know a little something 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 you know what I mean but yeah so you know you get the grant money and then we just use the grant money to you know do whatever mission that the nonprofit is about. So without even knowing it, uh, they came in and they put trees in the neighborhood. Where did these trees come from? You don't know where this came from. You know, uh, you spray paint on the walls in your neighborhood and then next you know, somebody comes and cleans it up. Who, who comes and cleans it up? These are all nonprofit organizations and nonprofit organizations are all funded by the government or some private investors. And then that's how, you know, these governments are taking care of it. So, you know, I found a need um, in the community that was that wasn't being fulfilled. So therefore, you know, Care Pictures Love is going to fulfill that. And that's the fact that, you know, the people who suffer the most from mass incarceration are the children of the people that are incarcerated. Because one they don't have that father figure or mother in their lives to provide them with the necessary um, decisions and the necessary choices that needs to be set for them, that needs to be taught to them. They don't have the people that they need that's supposed to be in their lives to teach them how to be the people that they're supposed to be. So because they don't have that, they end up following behind other people and other things. And a lot of times that leads them to get, you know, to, to go in the wrong direction. And when you go in the wrong direction, going in the wrong direction in America will leave you uh, and caught up in the system. And once you get caught up in the system, it's really hard to get out of it because you don't realize that you are caught up in something. It's hard to, it's hard to get out of something that you don't know that you're caught up in. It just feels like this is just okay. And it feels like it's okay because everybody around you is doing the same thing. Going to jail. And it's true. Look at the statistics. Look at how many people we have in jail. So it's true. Yeah. It's like what, a quarter in jail? It's crazy. That's it. It's outrageous. But 
it is the way it is. That's how it is. So I, I always say that I don't like to dwell on problems. I'm more so into solutions. So my solution is, is to be the one to teach all of these young kids and young children how to make better choices, how to say no to doing drugs, how to say no to committing crime, how to say no to doing the wrong things the right way, how to put right over wrong no matter what the, the situation is. And yeah, we're going to start off with just providing school supplies for kids to encourage you going to school, but it's more to it than that. It's definitely more to it than that. You know, our thing is we don't we don't want you to be going to jail like your uncle, like your brother, like your dad, like these other people. You know what I mean? So if you're somebody who has been affected by mass incarceration because one of your parents or siblings have been incarcerated and, and you were unable to have the necessary tools and things that you needed to further yourself in life because of this person was not there to give it to you, then you're eligible to receive what Care Pictures Love has for you. That's where I'm at with it, you know what I'm saying? Right now, right now we, we working, we working real hard. You know, I'm moving as, I'm pulling as many strings as I can pull. And somebody tell me, you know what, what you're trying to do, you need to do this, and I'm at that. You know what I'm saying? Google, how do I do this? Google, where do I go for that? Google, how do I do this? And I'm emailing, and I'm calling, and I'm talking to them. They don't even know where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? And I talk real good, I talk real well. And I got a GED, you know, I ain't, I ain't got no college degree and none of that stuff. But I don't want to go to college, even though, even though, even though college is a very good thing, very beautiful thing, it really is. You can learn a lot, and when you learn, like, it's never stop learning. Learning is just amazing. The more you learn, the more you can do, the more you feel. But see, that, it's, no, I want to do it. I can't lie. I say that I don't want to go to college. I, I think it was something. It would be something that would be great, but. What I mean when I say that is the fact that I would rather learn how to do specifically what it is that I want to do. I don't want to go to college to learn how to do something just to qualify to go and work for somebody else. I want to learn how to do what it is that I want to do. Oh, they hit the lights on me. Hold on, let's see if I can do something. So, you know, what's more probably with the light off, it's kind of boosting your stuff, but you can still see the kid. Right. Alright, well, that's the end of that, man. You know what I'm saying? Go to school, man.